Welcome to 123 Minimize with Jody and Linnea, the podcast where we discuss easy minimalism for busy moms. Whether you're a new mom in need of practical decluttering tips or an experienced parent seeking simplified routines, you've come to the right place. I'm Jody, wife and full time working mom of four. In 2017, I founded the Minimalist Mom Facebook group, now with over 270,000 members. My passion is creating a simple, healthy, and happy home where my family can thrive. I'm Linnea, a homeschooling mom of four. In 2021, my family and I sold our house, downsized to a 36-foot travel trailer RV, and embraced minimalism. Living with less has been liberating, and I'm thrilled to share tips and experiences to help you simplify your life. Whether you're sitting down, getting stuff done, or lacing up your walking shoes, welcome to the 123 Minimize podcast. All right, today we're talking about minimalism and self-care as a topic that I feel like gets discussed a lot, especially with mothers, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily something that we're all doing consistently because I think we get pulled in a lot of different directions. Yeah. And sometimes... I know that I will sometimes base my self-worth on how much I am giving to other people in my Mm -hmm. family and how much Mm -hmm. I'm taking care of them. Yeah. So we're here to discuss that today. Yeah. So what does self-care mean to you? So in the area of self-care, just finding ways to simplify, to help reduce stress, finding uh, effective ways to nurture your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. And hopefully we'll be able to give you all some good ideas that you can start implementing into your life to make your life better. Mm -hmm. I know when I was recently listening to an audiobook and the lady said, write down a list of 20 things that you do for self-care. I was shocked. Like I couldn't think of anything because obviously there's lists online, but what somebody else has on their list Mm -hmm. might not be what does anything for me, Mm -hmm. like anything. And it actually felt really good like self-indulgent, I think, to sit down and write a list of stuff and really think about what fills up my cup, what builds me up, what gets me ready for the week or Mm -hmm. what helps me wind down at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So self-care could be small things that you do for recovery or for a little bit of downtime, Mm -hmm. or it could be things that you implement in your day-to-day life so that you don't need as much recovery or downtime. Right. I know at night if I'm stressed out, Taking deep breaths can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm feeling like angry about something, Mm -hmm. taking deep breaths or going on a walk is incredibly helpful to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I went on a walk this morning and as I was walking by myself, I realized, oh, this feels really good to have a little bit of empty brain space just to think about whatever. Mm -hmm. And that made me realize that I haven't done that enough lately. Yeah. Because I was like hungry for it almost. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just a space to like process all those thoughts. Yeah. In the cobwebs in there. Right. And they're like taking up space. Right. I have read this thing about the lady who invented EMDR that it was because of going on a walk and what your eyes do on a walk and what your brain does on a walk. And so the, I think she was a psychologist and you can easily Google this and find the story. But I felt that was fascinating about mm-hmm. how like healthy going on a walk yeah. is for your brain. Mm-hmm. Gratitude journaling yes. can be helpful for fostering a positive mindset. That's right. Especially if you lean towards like a negative mindset, which I do. Mm-hmm. It helps me to remember like, oh, I have so much to be grateful and thankful right. for. It can mm-hmm. be simple stuff like oh, my kids are healthy, or it's Mm -hmm. not raining today, it's sunny, or Mm -hmm. um, we have food in the fridge. Yes. We have a warm house. Mm -hmm. Our vehicle works. It Mm -hmm. can be really basic, but those are big things. Yeah. Because when those things aren't happening, the furnace is broken, the car is broken, it's a big thing. Yep. Yeah, we like to do that, especially at the end of the day with our kids. Mm -hmm. Just just have everyone say something they're thankful for and really sets the mood for the whole house. Yeah. And also, if you're like me, I'm very list oriented. Mm, I, I love am. my lists. I love to check things off. I will write things down even after they're done just so that I can cross them off. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so I had a period of time where I had to be mindful about being grateful. And like at the end of the day, I would sit down and write down the things I did 
Mm -hmm. and put away the list of stuff that I didn't finish. Yeah. And just look at those things that I did and be thankful that I was well enough and had the energy and the time Mm -hmm. and the ability to get those things done. Otherwise, I ended the day feeling like a failure, like I was hard on myself. Yeah. Look at all this stuff left on my list and just really stressed me out Mm -hmm. and I'm sure affected my ability to get good sleep. Yeah. And then I wake up feeling like, oh, well, I don't know if I'll be able to do it today because I Mm -hmm. didn't yesterday. And so when I switched to a gratitude on that really helped me just be like, okay, we're okay. I got a lot done today and Mm -hmm. tomorrow's a new day for the rest. Yeah. For me also like reducing that stress, part of it is reducing the clutter. Yeah. So minimalism has been a huge part of my life for self care because when I regularly declutter, it makes a calming environment for me Mm -hmm. and I can really enjoy my house Mm -hmm. and I have more time. Of course, for the kids, because I'm not cleaning as much, which we've talked about in other episodes. Yeah. Same for me. Mm -hmm. Just the the whole atmosphere, like even wanting to be in a room. Yeah. Or even if you want to sit and think for a minute. You can't. I just can't. If there's so much visual stimulation everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, of course, things like getting good sleep. Yeah. Being hydrated, eating healthy food. Mm -hmm. All of those have benefits that you don't maybe see right away, like in the minute, like having gratefulness or going on a walk, but you definitely feel them over time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Early on in parenting, I thought of self-care as something that was selfish or could wait until the kids were out of the house. Yeah. But that really does lead to burnout. Mm -hmm. Self-care can also manage like stress, anxiety, feeling of being overwhelmed. When I have cared for myself, and, and that could even mean like taking a bath at the end of the day, to kind of unwind, to me, it leads to greater patience and flexibility with mm-hmm. my family the mm-hmm. next day mm-hmm. and actually problem solving skills. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I need some alone time. And not everybody processes that way. Some people need to talk it out. Right. But sometimes I'm tired. And if I start talking it out with my husband, it might end in like a disagreement because yeah. we're both like too tired yeah. for it. And if I'm just alone by myself or on a walk or taking a bath, I can work it out. Mm-hmm. And then I come to this, oh, that's what we can do. Oh, that makes mm-hmm. so much sense. And yeah. I just wasn't getting to it any other way. Self-care also helps me maintain personal identity beyond motherhood. Like who I am, what do I like to do? Even going to a movie by yourself or sitting at a coffee shop and reading a book can be extremely helpful to connect with yourself. I also enjoy meeting friends for coffee or dinner and talking about things and just connecting with other people that are in the same stage of life as I am. So I would encourage you if you get a chance to sit down and just try to come up with 20 things that bring you self-care. It could be like a walk, taking a bath, listening to a podcast, watching a movie or a show, mindfully sipping a warm drink instead of just downing it, but really like looking at it and smelling it and tasting it. It could be even buying yourself flowers, going out and eating a fancy dessert, doing nothing and sitting in the sunshine for 20 minutes or laying in a hammock. In the middle of winter, I was feeling really down. It's dark all the time. It's really cold. And my daughters put together a spa night where we listened to ocean sounds on the TV And we did some like yoga stretching and put a sun lamp on us. And it was really nice. It was just kind of recreate that beach feel in the middle of the dark (laughs) winter nights of Minnesota. Because it is dark a ton Mm -hmm. and cold a ton. And that can be when it's harder to have that feeling of self-care. I love in the summer when I can just go outside and lay in the sunshine. But here you can go outside and play in the snow, which is great. Mm Mm-hmm. And I did participate a lot in the getting in the ice in the water Mm. in the winter with a group of ladies. So some thermogenesis type stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was nice. It was nice. It was intense, but I did (laughs) get some benefit from it. And it's just nice to do stuff with other people, too. But one problem is when you are a really busy mom, it is hard to fit it in. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like five minute self-care things that really work for you? Yeah. So... I used to always feel like, oh, self-care, I need like two hours to myself yeah. or I need to go somewhere for or a, a weekend one, away. A weekend or away. Yeah. Right. I always had this like big 
Me you know, too. big. Unattainable, too. Not right. like something that I never actually got. Right. You know? Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing. If you're waiting for like this big chunk of time and it yeah. doesn't come, then you have nothing. Yeah. And what I started realizing was that if like not right when my husband got home from work, because he always needed like a few minutes, a few minutes you know, yeah. but maybe like half an hour after he got home from work, I'd be like, I'm about to explode can I just go have 15 minutes to myself mm-hmm. in the bedroom, like right before dinner or something, yeah. right after dinner? And he'd be totally fine with that because mm-hmm. that's not me being gone for four hours and him having to put all the kids to bed by himself mm-hmm. right. <laughs> or whatever. It's just like 15 minutes. And, of course, you always want more yeah. when you're in there because it feels so good. But it was amazing the difference it made to just like reset Mm -hmm. all of my like stress or like unending mama 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 from all day long Mm -hmm. was like I just had 15 minutes to just have a clear brain space do Mm -hmm. something that I really enjoy you know maybe just like veg out and play like a little game on my phone for five minutes and then take five minutes to just like collect my thoughts and like just be in a quiet room with nobody asking me any questions, no decision making, no, can I do this? Can I have this? You know? Yeah. So yeah, just finding, finding ways. Like if the big weekend away is not happening for you, you have to find ways. Maybe, maybe it's like planning ahead and getting up, even if it's 10 minutes before, if you kind of know what time your kids wake up, I understand when they're little, sometimes it's Mm -hmm. like unpredictable. Yeah. But if you kind of know what time usually the first Mm -hmm. child is awake, just get up 10 minutes before them Mm -hmm. or five minutes. I mean, even that, like, wow, waking up to kids who are like crying and they need you right away to Mm -hmm. change their diapers and like get them breakfast or whatever your situation Mm -hmm. is. For me, that was like, oh, my, I didn't even put my contacts in yet. Like, let me go pee. And, you know, yeah. I so, need a minute. <laughs> yep. So even if that and you're like maybe you're really, really tired all the time because you have young children mm-hmm. and getting up before them sounds overwhelming. Like I would be like, yeah, right. I'm going to stay in bed. Honestly, if you can just do five minutes to just have like a couple minutes to think and be by yourself before anyone wakes up. Trust me, it's going to be addictive. You're going to want to get up earlier and earlier because it's amazing mm-hmm. to have that early morning hours of just without anyone talking to you. Just think, mm-hmm. get yourself put together, and you will be a much happier mom and ready to help other people instead of waking up angry. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, I did this for years. Right. So. My fourth kid, he woke up at five oh. every day. Oh. Forever. He only recently started sleeping till seven. So when people say get up before the kids, I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, he would wake me up and that was fine. And then it was just me and him for a couple hours, which isn't so bad. Yeah. You know, it's not like, OK, now I got to do this whole big thing uh-huh. and get everybody going. Um, and I know people get up at five. Right. Uh, they have to for work and stuff. Right. And so I'm sure they're rolling their eyes. And goes, <laughs> oh, she complained about that. Yeah. You know, so some easy ones that I did when my kids were all. Like babies and toddlers, and you can't get away as easily. Right. I read in a magazine once. I don't remember which magazine. This is like over ten years ago. Um, that if you lay on the floor and you put your feet up on the wall, yeah, that it helps like with circulation and actually can be really like restorative. And so I would just do that for ten minutes, and the kids thought it was awesome. They would just crawl around on me, <laughs> and I could watch them all. I mm-hmm. wasn't like away, you mm-hmm. know. And they thought it was fun. It would stay right with me. And I did feel better. So if you can't get like a nap in and you're exhausted, I would use that as like, what do I do? I have to get through this day. It's like that 3 p.m. slump or something. And I just really needed to lay down. Mm -hmm. But then I needed to watch them. Mm -hmm. So laying down with them in some living room or whatever, Mm -hmm. it kept them interested. They would play (laughs) right by me. And it Mm -hmm. was great. Well, that's another thing, too. Doing some exercises Mm -hmm. in your home with your kids. Yeah. I mean, even if they're just kind of running around you, like you said, Mm -hmm. it's also setting a good example for them. Yeah. If they're really little kids and you're Mm -hmm. just like, you, if you have a baby, you could hold them and use them as like a weight as you're doing squats or something. Even just five minutes of a little bit Mm -hmm. of exercise will give you a boost. Yeah. I've also noticed with 
living where we do, that <laughs> I would be so cold. And if I would just kind of move around for five minutes, mm-hmm. I would feel fine. Yeah. You know? Go up and down the stairs. <laughs> yep. Or have a little dance party, put on yeah. some fun music, yeah. and the kids can dance around. Mm-hmm. We've, we've done that a lot. Mm-hmm. Or some family, like, YouTube exercise. Yeah. We have those, and that mm-hmm. can be fun. Their kid's on there, and it's, like, mm-hmm. geared towards kids. But right. you can totally do it with them. Mm-hmm. Another thing, when I've been able to go to the grocery store by myself, is to treat myself. And I would maybe get like a key lime yogurt or something uh, and sit in the car and maybe listen to the radio. <laughs> yep. And it was just enough that I felt like instead of, okay, leave the house, I'll be back and whatever, run into the grocery store. That's yep. kind of chaos. Yep. Better when I'm by myself. I could get in and out of there so fast. <laughs> yeah. But, and then you just rush back home to right. unload the groceries and put them away. And the kids mm-hmm. always help, which is awesome. But when you have really little kids, like, yeah. One time I had a toddler help with the eggs and throw <gasps> eggs down the stairs. Oh, no. And it was so bad. There were just eggs everywhere. Oh, no. And you're just like, oh, like you're still unloading the car. Oh, my god. You know, and now and they don't know what just happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was because we would put like some stuff in the basement, like toilet paper in that house. And so I would just toss the toilet paper. Oh, so it makes sense. Right. <laughs> but. Throw the egg stuff in the in the chaos. It was like the worst possible thing, but so it was nice to just sit in the car for a second, have something on the radio or an audio book or something, or talk to a friend, and just have that minute with. It doesn't have to be something like full on candy or whatever, because then I'd probably come back feeling a little bit wired and gross. Yeah, but like a nice Greek yogurt mm-hmm. that has some kind of that I wouldn't normally splurge on. Mm-hmm. We don't normally splurge on flavored yogurts with. Just buying for so many people, right. I get more like the big thing of yogurt, and you can put your own stuff yep. in it, you know? Yep. So just a little something uh-huh. special. So some things that help kind of prepare yourself for the self-care is on Sunday night, check your schedule and mm-hmm. see if you can fit anything in. Yeah. So often we get overwhelmed and tired, and this is, I think, pretty common in this country is to scroll on our phone instead of going to bed because we're just so done and we need like nothing time. Yep. And then we feel guilty or we stay up too late. Yeah. So my suggestion is to pick the things that work for you. Make your list. Mm-hmm. Pick like easy things that take five minutes, things that are 15 minutes, things that are an hour or more, mm-hmm. different categories. Yep. And try to like sprinkle them throughout your week. And if your like self-care thing is scrolling on Instagram, Awesome. Schedule it in. No guilt. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this for 10 minutes and I'm Mm -hmm. not going to feel guilty about it. This is what I need. Mm -hmm. Put it right in your schedule. Mm -hmm. This is what you're going to do tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. Instead of like doing it after everything else. Now it's digging into your bedtime. You're not getting good sleep. It's going on way too long. Mm -hmm. But schedule in that time so you can feel like a human again. Yeah. Another tip that I've read is to take one major thing each day at work or at home and put it on your list. Not 20. Uh-huh. It's just too much. You know, have your master list, right? Because I'm all about brain dumping. Like, mm-hmm. I'm all about writing that long list when mm-hmm. you get a chance and you get everything out of your brain and onto paper. But then, like, just decide. You're not going to be able to get groceries and mow the lawn and wash the car and... Remodel your basement on Monday. (laughs) Impossible. Right. You're just going to have to pick something. Mm -hmm. And some days you have to pick nothing off the list because normal life is just too much. Yep. But just try to protect your self-care. Yeah. Put it in there. Stick to it. It doesn't have to be long. Right. And pick something that really works for you, not something that works for your friend and not for you. Yep. And that's a wrap for today's episode about minimalism and self-care. We hope you enjoyed this topic and found a few tips that might help you on your journey. We want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our amazing listeners for tuning in. Your support and curiosity are what keeps us going. For more tools and resources to help you on your journey toward a simpler life, visit our website, www.123minimize.com. If you found today's episode valuable, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an opportunity to explore new ideas and perspectives. And if you're inclined, leave us a review which helps to spread the word to others who might enjoy the journey too. As always, feel free to connect with us on Facebook or Instagram to share your thoughts, suggestions, or just to say hi. Until next time, stay motivated. Take care.